Hi, this is Eric Ruderman uh, coming to you from ACR Convergence 2020 uh, for Room Now. Uh, welcome. And I, I wanted to talk uh, today about uh, a new therapy that's actually a new approach and a new pathway in psoriatic arthritis. Um, talk a little bit about the data that's presented at this meeting uh, and then talk about what this may do and where this may fit in our uh, paradigms for treating psoriatic arthritis. Uh, the new uh, molecule or the new uh, drug is called Ducravacitinib. Uh, it is a very specific uh, TIC2 inhibitor. Um, as you'll remember, the JAK family of kinases actually has four different molecules, JAK1, JAK2, and JAK3. And the, and the, the drugs that we've been looking at so far target uh, JAK1, 2, or 3 with varying degrees of specificity, uh, the newer agents a little bit more specific for JAK1. The fourth member of that family, and the reasoning for the nomenclature is lost in history, uh, is TIC2, not JAK4, but TIC2. Um, it is a JAK kinase. Um, as you may know, the JAK kinases um, help with signaling for a variety of different cytokines. They bind to the cell surface receptor. Uh, they dimerize and phosphorylate uh, two different JAK molecules at the uh, intracellular portion of that receptor, often heterodimers of two different JAK molecules. Those JAKs then uh, phosphorylate and activate uh, STAT molecules, which go down to the nucleus and activate transcription and protein production ultimately. Um, so TIC2 is kind of a unique um, molecule there um, the three agents that we've, or actually four agents almost, that we've seen so far that focus on JAK1, 2, and 3 don't, to a large extent, um, block TIC2, uh, but to a certain extent they do. But this drug, Ducravacitinib, is a very specific uh, inhibitor of TIC2. It binds actually not to the ATP binding site on the, on the uh, uh, protein, but to a separate regulatory uh, site on that protein that's um, distant from the ATP binding site. The, the benefit of that theoretically is that it may have actually more specificity. The problem with specificity with the other JAKs is that that ATP binding site may be similar between different JAK proteins. TIC2 is theoretically distinct. And the first data that we're seeing at this meeting uh, in one of the late-breaking abstracts, uh, number three in the late-breaking abstracts, is the phase two study of ducravacitinib in psoriatic arthritis. The drug has been studied in psoriasis before. The hope for this drug, or at least one of the hopes for this drug, is that interleukin-23 signals relatively specifically through TIC2. And so if you can isolate an inhibition of TIC2, you may be able to inhibit IL-23 signaling above other cytokine signaling and have a relatively specific target. That's important in psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis because as we know, IL-23 uh, antibodies that inhibit the IL-23 uh, molecule um, are very effective for treating skin disease. They're also effective for treating joint disease as we've seen with gazelcomab and some earlier studies of the other agents, uh, but particularly effective at treating skin disease. The other benefit is that inhibition of IL-23 seems at least on the surface to be associated with a somewhat decreased risk of infections and uh, side effects. So in theory, a JAK inhibitor that's more specific for TIC2, which therefore is more specific for the IL-23 pathway, would have benefit in psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. And that's the idea here. The data says that it works. It doesn't say that it works that much better. So if you look at the data in the trial that's presented here, it's an effective agent. It's effective at uh, reducing active joint disease as measured by ACR response. It's effective at, reduce, at improving function as measured by the HAC disability index. <clears throat> it improves enthesitis um, and MDA responses, minimal disease activity um, are higher than with placebo. And the skin response is quite good skin response isn't quite in the same ballpark that we've seen with specific IL-23 inhibitors. So one wonders whether this is truly, uh, as you might sort of call it, a, an oral IL-23 inhibitor, or it just sort of inhibits a slightly different pathway. And, and what we don't know is whether IL-23 signaled through other pathways that, that may sort of get around this. Um, the safety profile though was quite good. 
um, very few uh, serious adverse events, um, some minor infections, some rashes. Um, I think it remains to be seen whether the safety profile here is going to be better than the other JAK inhibitors. Um, so it, it's a good drug. It seems uh, positive in phase two. The pathway seems to hold promise, and there are other tick uh, inhibitors in development. Time is going to tell where this fits into our treatment algorithm. We have so many good drugs to treat psoriatic disease these days, from methotrexate, which still works, to a premolast, another small molecule, uh, to TNF inhibitors, IL-17 inhibitors, IL-23 inhibitors, the IL-1223 inhibitor, ustekinumab. And, and what we're struggling with is trying to sort through all of those and figure out which is the right drug for the right patient. Um, having another agent, the TIC2 inhibitor, um, certainly helps, but what we're going to need is, as things move forward is uh, data that helps us understand who's the specific population of patients that might benefit more from this than another drug, or, or perhaps most will, we'll have to see. Uh, stay tuned. Phase two data is always exciting to see. Uh, later stage data is really going to help us frame the use of the drug, and we'll see where that plays out. Uh, thanks for listening, and tune into Room Now for more information on ACR Convergence 2020.